If you're like me, you like to save mementos from your hunts. So I've got many tail fans and beards from turkey hunts around my house. When it comes to deer hunts, an easy thing I like to do is a European mount, or a Euro or skull mount as some people call them. What do we mean by a Euro mount? Well, we've got a couple examples here in front of us today. A European mount is basically a skull that's been cleaned, uh, deodorized, washed, made sure it's um, free of any odor causing material uh, so that when you display it, it'll be a nice either bone color or white in your house. But how do you get a, d a deer that you've shot out in the field to look like this? We have several examples here from a deer that's just come in from the field, still has hide on. You skin a deer out, you get the skull to where it's just bone and a little bit of material left on there. And then what I like to do for the ease and the timeliness of it is to boil a skull. Well, how do you boil a skull? You don't stick it in a pot on the stove. I like to use turkey fryers, uh, outdoor burners, some sort of propane burner. Uh, we've got a couple examples here. A double burner, a single burner, whatever you have handy or available. Pots, again, use what you have available. Um, little tip. If you steal your wife's, uh, get her a pot for Christmas. She probably won't want to use it again for, for your cooking. So, we'll prepare our water here uh, to get ready and boil this skull. This skull I've already got skinned out. Everything's ready to go. We'll get our, get our water ready and get this boil started. <laughs> ready to put this skull in and get it started boiling, but I don't use just plain water. There's a little bit of science to it, but just a lot of art. I like to add two things to the water. First off, I like to add some liquid dish soap. You're looking for the grease cutting effect of the soap. Again, I just put a squirt in there, no real pre-measured amount. That's going to help kind of keep that bone washed clean help get all that grease to actually rise to the surface instead of being baked into the bone. And then the other thing I add is either some borax or uh, washing soda, sal soda, um, sodium carbonate, whatever you want to call it. One or the other, it doesn't have to be some of both. Again, I just kind of make a guess at it. With a five gallon bucket, I'll usually do about an eight ounce cup. Um, but here I'm just gonna sprinkle some in and then we'll go ahead and get our cooker fired up here. All right, we've got it fired up. Um, before we stick the skull in, I'm gonna try to just take a little stick here, stir around, make sure that wash soda is mostly dissolved in that water. The washing soda or the borax kind of just helps actually break down that meat faster, the proteins in that meat. Um, you can do it without, but it takes longer to boil. With the wash soda in there, that meat will come off a lot quicker. I'm going to move this pot down out of the way. And we'll go ahead and stick in the skull. Like I say, you can use whatever pot you have available. I like this size. It's just big enough to fit a deer skull in lengthwise, narrow enough to kind of help hold the antlers up out of the water. I had it about half full. And what I want to do now is just add enough water that it covers over the top of the skull without getting too much onto the antlers. We'll watch that as it's, as it's boiling. When we get it up to a boil, I'll cut down the heat so that it's more a simmer. And then as it's going through, 
Uh, I'll keep an eye on it as well to make sure that water level doesn't get down below the top of the skull. If it does, just add a little bit more. Uh, otherwise, we're good to go. While this one's working on boiling here, we're going to get to work on skinning out and preparing a couple others. This deer was harvested a few days back. It was put in the freezer. That's a good way to store your deer if you're not going to be able to get to it right away. My most preferred way to do it is right after I've harvested a deer to go ahead and skin the whole thing out. Um, if I'm not going to be able to boil it, then I can go ahead and stick it in the freezer. But trying to get that skinning done right away is helpful. Second best way is to go ahead and stick the whole thing in a freezer about 12 to 18 hours before you're going to start working on it. Pull it out, let it start thawing. Uh, that way you can start working the skin around on that. So to get a deer from this condition to ready to go in the water, it's fairly simple. I use two tools. You can use a knife. I use about a six inch boning knife, but if you've got a scalpel or a caping knife or whatever you have handy, um, I like this. It's got a little bit of flex to the blade. I can work it around uh, without, without getting uh, too much trouble there. And then a screwdriver. The screwdriver comes in handy mainly around the base of the antlers. The skin is held very tight right there. There's not much meat underneath it and it's all solid bone. So having something, uh, a nice flat screwdriver uh, or a small, small pry bar, something you can get in there, work under the skin and just pry it out around the bases of those antlers. And then a pair of gloves, again, um, keeping yourself clean and, you know, just normal, normal safety measures in there. Okay, we've had this skull in here for Close to three hours here now. We're gonna pull it out and check real quick. Now, obviously this has been in boiling or simmering water for quite a while, so it's gonna be kinda hot. So watch your fingers on that. Throw on a glove here. So you can see this stuff is ready to just scrape right off of there, so I think we're good here. I like doing bottom jaws. Like I said before, it gives you something to look at for age of the deer, kind of helps, helps remember and helps memorialize that deer. But when you're doing the bottom jaw, one thing to remember, take into account, we're gonna take this outside and clean it, and these front teeth come off really easy. So what we're gonna do is instead of having to try to dig through the dirt outside and find teeth in the ground, we're just gonna take a set of pliers here real quick and pull these. We'll clean them up and then you actually just use some wood glue later and uh, paste them back in there and you can't tell the difference. So there should be eight teeth, four per side. We'll just kind of set those over to the side and get them later. Like I said, that should clean up real nice in there. Get this skull out. Ooh. Got that hard pallet. When you see that coming off, it's, it's definitely good and ready. We'll kill our fire here. We'll take it outside, uh, clean it up here. I like to use a pressure washer, really get it clean. Before we head outside, one thing I'm gonna try to do though is pull out this cartilage from the nose. Um, it's, all, it's all loose in there. We need to get that out. Um, a lot of people, if you take it to a professional or even you know some people just doing it themselves, they like to try to take a screwdriver and run a screwdriver up in there and just hollow out that entire nasal cavity. Personally, I like trying to leave it all in place. There's some really, uh, really neat bone structure in there. Uh, deer have a kind of cone of these really thin wafer-like bones right in that nose. It's what helps give them their olfactory power, the ability to smell stuff around them. So I like trying to leave that in place. Well, 
Well, that was a little bit dirty, but we got it all pretty much taken care of. You can see it's, it looks nice here now. Places to really watch out for here at the base of the antlers, you'll get some uh, cartilage or just some skin pieces left over right in there. Make sure and get those off. And then this whole area down in here, there's so many cracks and crevices. You really got to work around that pretty good. But I think we got it, got it looking good. Just finishing up, polishing up some of these teeth here. So from this point, you've got a few options. Personally, I like just the natural bone color and I've left most of mine just like this, let them air dry uh, for a few hours um, or overnight and pretty much be ready to go from there. These bottom jaws, a lot of times I'll take them over to a air compressor or some sort of compressed air, kind of blow them dry a little bit and I'll get them started sealing back together. Like I say, there's a seam right down that middle. Um, it naturally comes apart. You need to get it clean in there anyway. But then whenever I go back to put it together, it just fits together like a nice little puzzle piece. I put some wood glue in there, matches the bone color real well. And then uh, take a little rubber band, pinch it together right there at the tip, let it sit overnight and dry. Again with the teeth, those will fit back in as well. It goes smallest to largest from outside to in. Um, and kind of counterintuitive, there's a little bit of a curve to each of these teeth and the, actual, the curve actually goes to the outside. Um, but like I say, it's a little, little trial and error, fit it together before you actually put some glue in there. But it's pretty simple. Like I say, from here, you can also take this and bleach it. Uh, people call it bleaching. You don't actually use bleach. It's actually a solution of hyd hydrogen peroxide. Uh, bleach will actually tear this skull up, so you don't want to use bleach. Please, please don't use all your, your effort and then, then dump it in there. Hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, though, will give it a nice really white color. Um, a lot of times after I've done the hydrogen peroxide, it will eat away the bone a little bit. It'll kind of take off the, the outside smoothness of the bone. So I'll take a little bit of a finish, um, actually use mop and glue uh, floor shine and just paint that on real light with a tooth uh, with a paintbrush. It'll give it a little, little bit of a shine to it. And like I say, cover up that exposed bone, keep it looking white for a long time. Uh, or, like I say, get in touch with a, a professional, have it hydro dipped. Uh, there's people out there that paint dip on their own. There's, there's a lot of options from here. And again, when you go to display it, it can either be set out, you can put it on a wall mount, put it a pedestal mount. There's, there's a lot of options, but like I say, it's always, always a good way to keep these memories from these hunts. You can, can live that hunt over and over again for the rest of your life.